it's Jesse Amitrano and I'm here this morning to provide you with a flow and I have had some special requests for hip opener and shoulder opener. I hope I know now in the time that we're current time that we're living in, a lot of people are choosing to run and walk and cycle and even lift weights which can sometimes put a little bit more pressure on the body. So we need something to complement all of those activities. We love those activities. We wanna be able to maintain those activities, but it's just about taking the body in a different direction. So the specific flow today is going to be designed to focus on your hip area and your shoulder area. So I hope that you enjoy it, have fun, relax, and as always, you can do as much or as little of this as you like. Towards the end, I am going to bring in a bolster. So if you have a bolster or a blanket or a towel that you can roll up, then go ahead and grab that now. And then that way at the end, you're super prepared. So we'll take a moment to start in your child's pose, your wide-legged child's pose. We'll hang out for a few moments here if you have to go and get yourself settled with towels, blocks, straps, whatever um, you feel as though you need for today. But just begin there and allow your breaths to just fill and empty your lungs. So enjoy your flow. Here we go. We move to feel good. So we start in our wide-legged child's pose. And we're just letting the head sink into the floor and the hips sink back into the heels. As you take a big inhale and you feel the air starting to fill the lungs and really fill and puff that chest out as you exhale out the air. And then you take another big inhale and suspend or hold it at the top for just a few moments as you exhale out the air. And then we take another big inhale, allowing the breath to massage the organs underneath the rib cage, and you exhale out the air. You take your hands, walk them over to the right, and just really starting to feel that whole left side getting long. It's just about allowing the body to move so we can move the blood, we can move the circulation, come back through the center. Take it over to the left, getting that whole right side long. back to your center and let's start our cap cows. Come to, come to tabletop position. Your wrists are underneath your shoulders as you push away and exhale out the air. And then as you inhale, you arch and take the chin up. And then exhale. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you come down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And begin to take some dancing lines. And again, whatever direction you go in, one way. Table 
up. And now we'll begin our shoulders. Take nice, big circles. And we draw the attention to which direction you started with. Because after about three or four, we're going to reverse it. Okay, so now move in the other direction. Whichever way you started, just go the opposite. Remember always, there's no right or wrong to this. There's no right or wrong. We just move to feel good. We do specific movement, movements to isolate specific parts of the body. And then take the right arm, lift it all the way up, maybe even take that fingertips. Take the right hand and thread it through. So now we thread the needle. Take the left hand, bring it behind the back. You can grab the right hip. Come back up tabletop, and let's go the other side. Start your big sweeping circles. After about three or four, take it the other direction. shoulder, just rest for a moment. Breathe and just let it feel good. Ask the energy to be released from the body. Anywhere that feels a little bit tight, just ask for it to open up. Then coming back to center, Back again, a little upward facing. Press back downward facing for child's pose. Modified upward. Press back downward child's pose. So we're doing strength and flexibility at the same time right now. Go out. Take it straight. Go straight back. Straight up. And then come down. Same thing. Left leg. Bring it so that the foot is flexed first. Then straighten. And go all the way up. Heel the bum. Turn the knee so that it goes to the left. And then straight out. your lines out, keep it straight, straight back, up, down, child's. Come forward, modify upward, drop the thighs, go to sphinx. Try to keep your feet together. forward and gently just straighten the arms. So your hands are forward, belly is down, arms are straight. Take your right arm, thread it through, hold for a moment. Puppy. 
Press back, downward dog. First one of the day, you can pedal it out. Nice and slow, take your time. Let's walk our hands back to the feet, hang for a moment. Separate your feet so they're about hip width distance apart and then we're gonna sit in our squat. Turn to face this way. So we'll sit to our squat, the heels can be up or you can actually sit on a block. Either way, it's a simple movement that's not very simple for a lot of people, myself included. So I'm gonna add a twist to it. Take the left elbow, bring it to the outside of the right. And you can fly, or you can bind, or you can open it. Okay, whatever variation that you choose, right? If you choose nothing and you just stay in the squat, you're still building all that flexibility in the feet, in the ankles, in your Achilles. Take the right elbow to the outside and the left. Again, same thing now on the left side. Take either side crow, fly it, or just stay in your squat with the twist. Okay, come back to the center. Find your squat. Straighten your legs, and then let's walk your hands back forward into that downward facing dog. Hands go back forward, downward facing dog. We're gonna come forward to plank. We're gonna drop chaturanga. Upward facing, downward facing, and then here we are. Let's lift up your right leg and start to make big circles now on the way. So find a movement that feels organic for you. Again, still just letting it get open and fluid. Take the right leg up for a one-legged downward dog and then step it through your hands. We step to a low lunge. Your hands can be down, hands can be on block, you can be on fingers, you can lift the hands. Again, it's whatever you're comfortable with in the moment. So open it up, cactus the arms, Stick out the chest, arms are straight. Turn to the right, center, turn left, center, cactus arms. Hands to the floor, step the foot back, downward facing dog, come forward plank, chaturanga, Upward, downward. Take your left leg lifted, circle it around. Again, organic movement. Take it the other direction. Lift one legged downward dog on the left. Step your foot through your hands for that low lunge. So, foot's on the hands. Pressing back heel forward, you're here, or you're here. I'm gonna come up, cactus the arms, center, left, center, right, center, hands down, step back, downward dog. Walk or jump your hands up. Either round or reverse your swan dive up, arms up over your head, and go back. Remember, hands can separate, arms can cactus, whatever back bend you choose. And then go forward. Hang for a moment. Down. Let's inhale, lengthen. 
exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Go ahead, jump or step it back, low plank it up. Go ahead, move right through your vinyasa. Okay, we're gonna lift up your right leg and step it through your hands for a lunge twist. Right hand to right hip. Right arm up. You can take the right hand and you can bring it behind the back. You can take left elbow, bring it to the outside. Open the arms. Hands down, step back. Downward dog, come forward plank. Chaturanga, upward, downward. Remember those optionals? Those vinyasas in the middle are always optional. Lift up your left leg, step through your hands, Lunge twist on your left, press your back, heel forward, even if your knee bends. Left hand, left hip, twist. Hand can go behind. Then your right arm can go on the outside of the left. You can bind, or you can open it. Hands down, walk it through the center. Widen the split. Drop your right knee to the floor and come back. Pass one. Let's come forward. Press your right hip down, left foot flat, chest up, the back bend. However you feel comfortable, arms or no arms. Let's come back through center, wide middle split. Drop left knee, come to the back, half split. Might not be that far, it might be more like up here. Come back forward, take your right foot and make it go flat. Yep. Backward bend. However you choose. Go back through the center. And then wide middle split again. The hip joint, like I said before, is ball and socket. So it moves in 360 degrees. So the the if we take a variety of diverse movements that take us in all directions, we can begin to start to get more fluid into the actual joint, which will lubricate it and which will make it feel better. Let's walk our feet back together. And you can either grab the big toes you can grab the heels, the hands can go on the floor. Or if you're kind of in the middle, then the forearms can go to the floor. I like that one. Let's add some shoulders. Come up halfway, take your right hand and bring it behind your back so that the elbow comes on the top of the head. And then drop down. Your grip from behind is gonna be like this, or you can grab a strap or a towel to make it happen. Okay. Um, you'll see it once I get upside down. Okay, come back up, let's reverse it, other side. And then come down. back up. Take the hands behind the back and make a, fi or make a fist. You can either use, again, a towel or a strap and then the hands go up as the head goes down. And then the hands can start to work themselves gently forward for that nice shoulder stretch. Don't force it. 
Remember, just stay and let it feel good for a moment. Okay, take your hands, bring them in between your legs in prayer position so they point towards the wall behind you. Drag your fingers forward, take a big inhale, lift, and then go ahead and go back. And then let's come forward to the floor. Take your right hand and lift it up for that twist. Right hand can grab left hip. Right hand down, left hand up. Left hand can grab right hip. Okay, let's go back down to forearms. And then we're gonna drop the knees to the floor and bring your, flex your feet and keep your knee and your heels in line. And then eventually, you'll be able to bring the hips back down or drop down. Again, don't go too far in this one. Or I shouldn't say that, just be really ginger with your movements. Be declarative, be aware, be consistent. Just holding for a moment, letting the fascia and the connective tissue release. drop it to the floor and it's in that bent position and now your left leg is going to come over the top of it. Now you can grab that blanket or towel or block and you can place it in between your knees right here or the left knee stacks on top of the right knee. Again, closer will be harder, farther away will be easier. So the closer the heels are to the sides of the hips, the harder it will be you pull it out, it will give relief. So you can choose how you're gonna play with it and then you might change it daily depending on how your body's responding. So again, wider, easier, closer, harder, you decide where you're gonna go with it. We're gonna take that same grip from behind. Whatever leg is on top is gonna to be whatever arm is on top. So take the left hand, bring it up over the head, and you want to be able to see the elbow pointing right up over the center of the head. The right hand is going to go behind the back and you reach for the fingertips. You can always, it'll look like this, back view. You can use a strap or a towel if you need to in order to be able to get the grip. Okay, we're adding the arms and the shoulders now as well as, as the hips. This is in our lineage called cow face. This is Gomugasana. A widely popular, sometimes meditative seat. Let's switch it. Take the left leg. Now we're going to drop the left leg to the ground and we're going to bring the right leg over the top 
of the left. Again, heels closer, harder, away, easier. The right leg is on the top, so the right arm is gonna come to the top, the left hand is gonna go behind, and the fingers cup, don't interlace, or try not to interlace the fingers. Okay. Allowing tricep to stretch, lat to stretch, serratus, all stretching. Okay, lift up through the chest, not pushing the head back, lift the chest. So it's common if you're down here. If you're down here, stick your chest out. Don't push back with the head. Okay. It's little, little common tricks that I see or notice. Right? Don't, try not to go from the head, make it happen from the chest. And, and just wait for it to happen. It's the lost art of our yoga is the, that concept of waiting. Okay. okay, we're done on that side. Now we're gonna go to 90-90. So I take the right leg, I'm gonna go right leg on the bottom first, and your right leg lines up with your, or your right knee lines with right hip, and then your flex left foot as you bring left knee down. And again, you might have towel, strap, or a block, or bolster right here, and you can let it rest. If you flex that left foot, it would always keep the knees protected. See, mine on this side don't quite, don't quite touch and land yet. I have to be real ginger with the rheumatoid that's in my hips when I don't have the, the heat. So I just go nice and slow and just stop where you need to stop and let the body organically begin to work it out. The body's a self healer. It will do what it needs to do if we give it the right tools in order to work better. Okay, let's take the left leg now on the bottom. Your big thing is alignment cue is left knee and left hip. Take your right leg over it, and then here we are. Just resting for a moment with the upper body while the lower half of the body is like, wow, there's a lot going on. Okay, so you're gonna take your left knee now and bend it so that the foot is flat and you're gonna grab over the top of the right foot and line your toe up with your nose. Again, this is that, that move, that hip wound movement that is very beneficial to a lot of things that we do in complementary, I should say, to our running or cycling. So toe to nose and then pull toe to nose. Don't pull head, right? Head doesn't move, keep head where it is, pull toe to nose. Then imagine your foot, it's like a telephone and you're gonna talk on it. See, I'm not making good movements. I'm not actually bringing the foot to the ear. Okay, so even if it only moves a quarter of an inch, you're good. Now we're gonna grab between the big toe and the second toe and straighten it. Now your left leg can straighten if you choose. Straighten will amplify, bent will modify. Less bent, more straight. Take the leg out to the right, lift the chest, back to the center. Now we're gonna think about taking, bending the knee and taking the knee towards the wall behind us, not turning it out, see that? Not there. We're gonna go here. So that foot would stay flat against the wall in front of you. And you're just gonna gently put the right shoulder underneath the knee. And maybe you stay here. Okay, over time, you begin to straighten that leg, but I'm gonna ask you not to turn it into a compass. And I want the spine twist right now, it's not the intent. We're gonna lift, because we're getting this shoulder, we're getting this hip, and we're getting the stretch from the knee to the hip joint right now. Okay, let's go other side. We'll start with the knee bent, grab over the top of the foot, line toe to nose. Chest lifts the same way it did when we were in the figure four. Toe to nose. Pull foot or toe to nose. Pull it in. Pull it to the side. Talk on the telephone. Grab between big toe, second toe. Straighten right leg. Straighten left leg. Left leg out to the side. Pull it back. Let the knee go towards that back wall and the shoulder goes underneath. Over time.
time. Maybe we just stay here. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're here. It's still the right roadmap. You're still moving in the right direction. I call it, I say, set it and forget it. It's like if you just stay there, over time it'll straighten, 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 straighten. Okay, come back down, bring the soles of your feet together. And the soles of the feet are together, same thing. Closer, harder, further away, easier. You decide where your feet are going to be on the floor. Heels can come a little closer. Heels can push a little bit further away. You're going to take your right hand and press down on that right knee. I do let the shoulder come up to the ear, and I do a little bit twist to the side. If you twist a little bit left, you'll be able to get more movement by pushing that right knee down, which will target the inside of the hip. I did this one every day when I was pregnant with the twins. This one really saved me as far as the hip openers go. So let's go other side. Right hand, let's grab left hand, left knee, press down. Add that little twist. Now, the goal is for both hands to go on the knees and see how my elbows are bent. Now, we try to straighten them as you hunch the ears or hunch the shoulders up to the ears. It might look like this, that's fine. We're trying to achieve that. But the achievement doesn't mean that you're not getting the stretch. If elbows are bending, you're still getting the same stretch. Don't get caught up with the depth of the posture. It's not about the depth. Take the hands and grab over the top of the foot and now it's nose to toes. If you can go nose to toes, you go forehead to floor, the elbows are gonna go in front of your shins. basic for hips and shoulders. Again, just to complement the outdoor activities that we're doing. A little bit every day. It's all we have to do. So come down forward, take your left arm and thread it through. The right hand can go back behind and just rest. We'll be here for about a minute. Left arm up, grab right hip, 
We're here for about a minute. Thank you. 
Awesome, very good everybody. Go ahead and slowly make your way off the bolster. Make your way to a seated position. And we'll do one more just to get our blood flow back into our upper body. So we're going to take the thumbs, bring them behind the back, the fingers go forward. We're going to inhale to the left and exhale to the right. Go as fast or as slow as you like. The whole point is to just not give up. I've got you on the clock and here we go. In left, X right. In left, X right. And let's begin. Take a big inhale, arms down, tuck your chin to your chest, suck your stomach in, pull up on your mula banda, hold for three, two, one. Release your locks, pick your chin up one more time, take a big inhale, tuck your chin to your chest, suck your stomach in, hold your mula banda for three, two, one. Release your locks, pick your head up. Just notice what you notice for a moment without adding any extra emotion to it. Take the hands into prayer, release the thumbs, bring the thumbs to the third eye. We ask that we intuit the truth. Thumbs to the mouth, I speak the truth. Thumbs to the heart, I know the truth. Back to the top, Shanti. Mouth, Shanti. Heart, Shanti. Shanti, 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 own peace to all beings. Thank you so much for joining us. Use it as many times as you need to, depending on what your other activities are going on. And thanks so much for joining us. Subscribe below and stay in touch. Comment, please feel free, comment below. Give us your feedback. Tell me what you're looking for and I can tailor it for whatever we need. Have a great day, everybody. Go in peace. Namaste.